That's all the time we have for questions and answers. We're going to move into member statements. I recognize the member for Brantford Brant. Good morning, everyone, and thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker, I first heard of the Living Donor Program thanks to Jason Shawana, a Brantford hockey coach who had part of his liver removed during his battle with cancer. Jason's story inspired me to become a living donor so that I could have the ability to save a life. Over the course of the last year, I have been working hard behind the scenes to get in shape to become a liver donor for my liver. A couple of months ago, I underwent seven hours of surgery and had 40% of my liver removed. And I am pleased to report that the surgery was a success and that the recipient is doing extremely well. <laughs> Speaker, as a Christian, I am motivated to serve both God and my community. And by becoming a living donor, I have been able to save and improve the life of someone in the province of Ontario. The entire process of donating a portion of my liver was both profound and deeply meaningful. However, during this process, I could not help but think of the countless Ontarians who are currently waiting for organ transplants. And while I recovered in hospital, I learned that if only one out of every 10,000 Ontarians were willing to become a living donor, the entire transplant waiting list would be cleared. If I can help inspire even one person to register as a living donor, Speaker, I will be overjoyed. Thank you very much. Further member statements, I recognize the member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. After an extended five-month shutdown imposed by the Premier, I'm pleased to be back in the Legislature. While so many across this province are struggling, the Premier extended the summer shutdown so he could avoid being held accountable for his harmful decisions. No question period, no media scrums, no transparency, and no accountability. Over the summer, I visited my constituents at their homes, workplaces, community events, and more. I heard firsthand about the struggle they are facing. Parents working two or more jobs just to try to feed their families and hopefully keep a roof over their heads. After the Premier removed rent control, many constituents are having to choose between paying rent and buying groceries. More than a million Ontarians turn to food banks. People on ODSP are even further behind, and homelessness is increasing. Public health care is crumbling. People are waiting more than five hours for care in emergency rooms, assuming one is open in their community, and two and a half million Ontarians don't have a family doctor. Public schools are crumbling. Overcrowded and unsafe classrooms is the norm, and the repair log keeps getting bigger. Intimate partner violence continues to impact every community in Ontario. Nearly 100 municipalities have declared IPV an epidemic, and yet just yesterday the Conservatives voted no to passing My Bill 173 and declaring IPV an epidemic. Ontarians need and deserve a government that is focused on making their lives better, making it easier, not a Premier who is solely focused on pet projects that only make his friends wealthier and life harder for Ontarians. It is time for some positive change. For the member statements, I recognize the member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you, Speaker, and good morning, colleagues. Last month, I had the honour of attending an excellent celebration at the Shouldai Stone facility in the great community of Shallow Lake in the great riding of Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. The event was to recognize Shouldai Stone's receipt of funding through the Regional Development Program's Southwestern Ontario Development Fund, which will boost the local manufacturing sector and create excellent new jobs in the community. Bev Scholdeis started Scholdeis Stone in 1947. Rob and June grew the business by adding numerous innovations and new products to reflect customers' expanding tastes. Architects, builders, masons and homeowners have relied on Canadian-made Scholdeis Stone for durable, eye-catching results, whether for a dream home or company project. Today, Brad and Steve continue the family legacy and are growing the business for generations to come. They proudly carry on the family's promise. Our word is our bond, and our handshake is a contract. I saw firsthand the great culture this promise has created at the celebration event on September 20th. Workers, family, and community members and partnering companies all were there in great numbers to celebrate this great enterprise. 
After touring the production facilities in the new office building, meeting Steve Brad and, and CEO Chris Peterson, it was easy to see how Shouldais Stone has been such a success. Congratulations on your great success and your great contribution to our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, we debated legislation about stunt driving. It's an important road safety issue. But my question for the House this morning is, what do we do about stunt policies? Because right now, there's a lot of that happening in Ontario. We have a Premier right now who insists, without any evidence, that bike lanes cause traffic congestion, or that bike lanes delay first responders from getting to the scene of an accident, or that we somehow need a 38-kilometer tunnel under the 401 to reduce traffic. But this is what peddling and stunt policies that aren't serious looks like. This is a government that is impaired by the determination to pit road users against each other when they should be focusing on safety for everyone. And while they play games, Speaker, people are getting hurt and killed in our streets. Like Audrey Cameron, a 16-year-old back home in Ottawa who was hit by a reckless driver last month and had her pelvis and right knee shattered. She has traumatic brain injuries. The Premier's stunt policies are not going to help Audrey or anyone else. But I'll tell you something. Tomorrow at 5 p.m. outside this building, I and the member for University of Rosedale and others will be gathering with road safety advocates, families who have lost loved ones, people who have been injured by reckless driving, reckless policies in our streets. We will not play games with people's lives, Speaker, and this government shouldn't be playing games with people's lives. Government House Leader will come to order. Member for Etobicoke Lakeshore will come to order. Please. The next member's statement, the member for Whitby. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Well, thanks to our Health Minister and the Premier, our government has provided more than $12 million in capital planning grants to support Lake Ridge Health's Master Redevelopment Plan as part of a larger overall investment to complete this multi phase expansion. Speaker, this expansion of Lake Ridge's services and hospital campuses will add a total of 300 new hospital beds and enhanced services throughout the region, redeveloping the Bowlinville Hospital to double the hospital's capacity by adding 32 new beds and building new state-of-the-art facilities, a brand new regional hospital in Whitby, a new post-acute care center in Pickering, and creating space for acute care capacity at the Oshawa site by relocating some services to a new post-acute care center in Pickering. Speaker, we'll continue to take bold, decisive action to expand capacity and build modern, state-of-the-art facilities across the province to reduce wait times and ensure people of all ages can access fast, convenient care closer to home. Speaker, once again, getting it done for the province of Ontario. Order. Order. The next statement, the member for Parkdale High Park. MPPs are finally back in the House for the fall session. We were supposed to be back after Labor Day, but the Ford Conservatives did not want to get back to Queen's Park. The House is sitting after five months. Why? Because the Ford Conservatives want to avoid accountability. Here are some of the actions, blunders by the Premier when the House wasn't in session. Breaking the beer store contract to bring booze to corner stores a year earlier. It's costing taxpayers over $200 million. Even people who want beer in corner stores say they could have waited a few months to save that money. The Conservative government abruptly closed the Ontario Science Centre, citing roof panels as a safety concern. It turns out not only was there no immediate safety issues, but that one in 12 public schools have the same roof panels. The Therma deal was finally released, and it's one of the worst deals this province has ever made, putting taxpayers on the hook for billions of dollars over 95 years and chopping 300 mature trees for a luxury spa. It doesn't end there. The Premier is talking about building a tunnel under Highway 401 and destroying already built infrastructure like bike lanes. Meanwhile, there is no completion date for the Eglinton Crosstown that's billions over budget and has led to the destruction of hundreds of small businesses. And who can forget the Premier's appointment of the largest cabinet this province has ever seen? 
The Premier talks about respecting taxpayers, but his actions disrespect the hardworking people of this province. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Thornhill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, it's Breast Cancer Awareness, Awareness Month in Ontario, and one in nine women will be affected in their lifetime. In late fall of 2020, I became a statistic when, after a routine mammogram, I was diagnosed with DCIS, ductal carcinoma in situ. This is an early form of breast cancer. But my surgeon promised that I would still be here in five years if we acted quickly. And I'm here today because of early detection and regular mammograms. That's why that I'm so proud that our government is connecting more women to life-saving breast cancer screening by lowering the age of eligibility to self-referral to a mammogram from 50 to 40. And as of October 8th, women over the age of 40 can now self-refer, giving an additional 1 million women the option to detect, uh, detect and treat breast cancer sooner and get on with their lives. So in early uh, 2022, months after my surgeries and my life-saving treatment, I got on with my life. I felt really strong, and I ran in the provincial election as the candidate in Thornhill. I want to thank, I want to thank so many of the people in my health care journey. Uh, including Dr. Adina Shear at the St. Michael's Hospital and the healthcare team uh, with my uh, doctor, Dr. Eric Silver. I'm here today because of early detection. I'm here for my community, and most importantly, I'm here for my kids. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kanata Carleton. Thank you, Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. I was so lucky this summer to get out and have many conversations at community events, at the doorsteps in my riding, and most recently at the Carp Fair, my favorite place in the fall. I know people are struggling. Many of us don't have a family doctor. They're worried about the state of our health care system. They're struggling to make ends meet, and they're struggling to find an affordable home, and they are rightly concerned about the state of our education system. Speaker, I also got to visit amazing businesses in Canada North, Canada's largest technology park, including the amazing team at Tudor Ocean. They are using artificial intelligence to design learning tools to assist teachers, students, and parents alike, creating incredible homework and tutoring platforms to suit any learning style, which can transform teacher-student relationships and boost engagement in the classroom. This cutting-edge Canadian technology is being presented to Harvard University next week. Speaker. Last thing, tomorrow, Wednesday, the 23rd of October, is Ottawa Student Transportation's Driver Appreciation Day. Day in and day out, the school bus drivers ensure students travel safely to and from school. Our students and families couldn't do it without them, and we thank them for their professionalism and commitment. Thank you, Buck. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Markham, Thornhill. Speaker, auto theft, auto theft is a major issue across the country. Auto theft is not just a theft, Mr. Speaker. In some cases, this is a life or death situation with the carjacking and the armed robberies becoming a common. People feel very unsafe in their own home. And that's why today I rise to acknowledge the tremendous effort of York Regional Police in compacting the rise in auto theft through the launch of Operation Auto Guard. This comprehensive initiative is aimed at reducing the auto theft. The first Operation Auto Guard led to the recovery of 80 vehicles worth more than 5 million, with 56 people facing almost 300 charges. Mr. Speaker, YRP have a taken a multifaceted approach targeting high-risk neighborhoods and engaging directly with the community. 
these proactive measures are making a real difference. Since last year, auto theft have dropped by 30 percent. It's a significant achievement that demonstrates the effectiveness of community focus, crime prevention, and law enforcement. I also want to recognize our government support of this effort with 900,000 investment as part of the broader 18 million provincial plan fight against the auto theft. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank the Chief Jim McSween and the men and women in the uniform of YRP for fighting against this dangerous crime. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honoured to stand in the chamber today to celebrate my predecessor, Chris Hodson's retirement from the Ontario Mining Association. For 40 years, Chris has played a very important role, not only with Ontario mining industry, but right here at Queen's Park. Chris represented our home riding of Halliburton Kawartha Lakes Brock from 1994 to 2003. He served as Minister of Natural Resources, Northern Development and Mines, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, Chair of Management Board. During his time as Cabinet Minister, Chris had many notable achievements. To name a few, as Minister of Natural Resources, Chris launched the government's Living Legacy Program, the single biggest expansion of parks and protected spaces in Ontario's history. He introduced the first amended Fish and Wildlife Conservation Act in 50 years, replacing the Game and Fish Act to toughen enforcement. He oversaw smart growth. Chris has had a profound impact on Ontario's mining sector during his public life and also as president of the Ontario Mining Association since 2004. It is an extra special occasion, as tomorrow we will celebrate Meet the Miners Day. It is because people like Chris Hodson and organizations such as the Ontario Mining Association, our province enjoys a strong and robust sector. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank Chris for his 40 years of contribution to the mining industry and service to the province of Ontario and wishing him the very best and well-earned retirement. We are all very proud of Chris and his accomplishments at home in Halliburton, Court Lakes, Brock. Thanks. Thank you. That concludes our member's statements for this morning.